Welcome back to DP World Southampton for part two of our look at the UK's second largest container port. And as we turn the corner from Berth SCT5, we can remember that it isn't just the headline catching big ships that matter. Smaller vessels like this feeder liner operate regular services around the North Sea, the Irish Sea and Channel ports, carrying boxes transshipped from the much larger ships but destined for much smaller ports. Only just arrived on our filming day, the 11th of February, MOL Bravo, completing her Northern European course with a stop here and another stop at Le Havre before heading back towards Suez and Singapore. After that, she'll be making four calls in Japan, two more in the Far East and one at Jeddah before arriving back in North Europe. At this moment, the cranes are coming down, ready to get to work on her and within 24 hours she'll be on her way again. Now it's time to go back to DP World Southampton's Head of Commercial to learn more about the terminal and its operation and to see if he'll risk a look into the crystal ball to see what the future holds. After that we'll be looking at landside operations. Well, the UK is definitely doing really well, mm -hmm. and, and for us, of course, UK is, is our driving uh, element. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we are really seeing at this moment, of course, consumer spending is up, uh, fuel costs are down. So, I think overall, we can be quite confident of continued growth in UK for this year. Now, looking back at Southampton as an individual port, one of the things that you do incredibly well on is productivity across the quay and out of the gate, don't you? You move a lot of boxes very quickly. Yes, and, and that's, let's say, where in the past, back in 2009, 2010, when we were sort of uh, under pressure from a lot of competition coming on, mm -hmm. uh, reduced volumes, we said, OK, we have to change. Uh, we can't continue to work in the old ways. And, and we started talking with our labor force. We started uh, investing in new equipment mm -hmm. in new systems. And uh, slowly that has all been changing and uh, yeah, that all coming together has given us indeed the advantage of, of higher productivity and, and indeed good landside turnaround times and, and that's key because all the customers today, there's enough capacity so they will have a choice and we want to make sure that they uh, continue to choose for Southampton. At the moment 2014 pretty good, 2015 is looking good. Where are you going in the future? What are you looking to do in the future? We never know how the year will develop, but uh, uh, if indeed uh, things continue to develop uh, well with, with volumes in 2015, uh, yeah, we need to make sure that, that we are really continuing to be efficient and uh, that we can basically use all the space we have available in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably one of the steps where we need to look at how can we maximize the available space we have and, and make sure that our customers can continue to grow. Because at the moment you are on a limited area of land, aren't you, inside the port? So you have to look at making your operation more efficient and keener. Yes, that, that's correct. Uh, on one hand, we, we are using the straddle carriers, which is really flexible, mm -hmm. good for productivity and, and quick turnaround times. But uh, they take a lot of space. And that's where we say, OK, there is opportunities to uh, yeah, better utilize the space we have available, mm -hmm. potentially looking at some small areas to add and, and indeed in that way uh, creating yeah, more space for, for future uh, volume growth. The people you have to deal with and convince about your port's viability and your port service is the people who actually own the cargo. They drive the whole situation more than anybody now, don't they? Yeah, that, that's correct. It's not just uh, the shipping lines who have a choice uh, mm -hmm. nowadays, but it's, it's especially the, the cargo owners. 
and, and what's important for us is indeed that uh, yeah, we go out and, and, and meet with cargo owners and, and try to tell them indeed, yeah, how we work mm -hmm. and give them transparency of our operation. And, and sometimes uh, that, that really works well because then we may get a telephone call where they say, well, we actually have a problem. We, we have this promotion. Uh, we miss uh, a couple of boxes which are coming in uh, the coming week. Can you help us get them off early? Or another uh, example is where, where Honda have been uh, working with us to say, okay, they have uh, assembly line and of course it's all just in time deliveries. But if let's say one batch of product is, is uh, not having the quality they need and they need to get the next, next batch in, that may uh, yeah, be difficult if that's still on a ship. And several times they've basically asked us, okay, can you help? And our planners then try to prioritize the, the discharge of those boxes so that we make it available as early as possible for Honda. And yeah, as a little bit of a reward, uh, last year we were awarded the uh, yeah, Honda Supplier Award uh, as a special recognition indeed of the help we've been uh, providing to them uh, during last year. Which is a pretty good game, isn't it, really? That's quite a compliment from your point of view. Yeah, I would say indeed uh, it's, it's the automotive industry and of course they are very critical in uh, how their supply chain is, is organised. And uh, yeah, if they are happy in how our service is working, that I think is, is clearly a sign of, uh, yeah, of recognition. To do your job you have to have a good idea of what the future holds. How are we doing? Have we got enough capacity? Do we need more? Do we need more berths? Are present berths going to be filled quite quickly? What's the story from your point of view? Um, I would say in general at this moment there is uh, more than enough capacity. There is over capacity. Mm -hmm. At the same time I think uh, we see a, a huge increase of the large vessels and, and of course they need certain capacities, capabilities. Uh, so yeah, at some stage I think the situation will change and there will be a more balanced supply and demand and in the long term of course at some stage there will be a moment where uh, yeah, a new capacity needs to be developed uh, to, to basically increase it compared to where we are today. When that moment is, is really difficult to say. It can be within a few years and it can be in, in sort of 10 years time. Um, that, that, that's only what the future can tell. I can't say that at this moment. From our point of view, the biggest difference between Southampton and the UK's other major container ports, Felixstowe, London Gateway and Tilbury, is the way containers are handled, stacked and loaded onto road transport. It's all done by straddle carriers. This seems to give Southampton excellent results in terms of throughput and in flexibility. But the limited heights of their stacks seem to mean that the terminal doesn't get as much value out of its land area as other ports do. It'll be interesting to see what's next on DP World Southampton's shopping list as the year progresses. And when we hear more from the striving and efficient UK container port, you'll be the first to know.